Now in this set it says that there are eight cricket teams A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H and they are participating in a T20 tournament and in the first round these eight teams were divided into two groups of four teams each. And each team has to play two matches against each of the other teams in its group. So out of eight there are two groups say group one and group two. And in each of the groups there will be four teams and each team in a group will play exactly two match with the other team. So if I want to find out that within a group how many matches will be there then we can say that if there are four teams and if they had played exactly once against each other then we can say that there would have been four C2 or uh, six matches. But since they are, uh, uh, they are each of the team is playing uh, against the other team twice then we can say that the number of matches will also increase to 12 or it will also get doubled so the number of matches in each of the group will be 12 right now further it says that the team with the highest and the second highest uh, number of the wins in both the groups will move to the next round so out of these four the two teams from each of the groups will move to the next round and that is the semi-final rounds and it is also known that uh, team B F H and G they reach to the semi-finals so we know that which four teams have qualified to the semi-finals and which four teams have eliminated in the uh, in the group matches itself and there are other facts known regarding the first round that is the group uh, group matches and depending upon that we have to identify that what were the teams in each of the groups and uh, obviously how many matches they have once against each other so uh, the, the condition is talking about that only right so let's start with the process and before that let me just make space for the rough work so let me just eliminate these things so we have two groups so let us take the name of the group to be group one and the other to be group two now it says that b f h and g they have reached to the same final so two out of these will for will uh, will go to the group one and the other two will group uh, will go to the group two right and uh, the first condition it says that no match ended in a tie and in each of the group each of the four teams won a different number of matches so within a group all the four teams have won a different number of matches that's what this uh, this uh, uh, condition says and it also says that there is a no tie so obviously every match has a result now second condition says that f lost both its match against g now this simply means that f and g must be in the same group right unless they are in the same group they cannot play against each other because any team can play against the other team within the group or or if the both the teams are in the same group so we can say that f and g are in the same group and also from this condition that these are the four teams who reach to the semi-finals and we can see that both f and g features so that means both these teams are in the same group and both qualified for the semi-final as well and further the second condition say that E won the least number of matches in its group. So obviously E has been eliminated and within its group E will be winning the least number of matches. So let me mark these things so that E will be winning least number of matches. Right. So this will just remind me. Now the third condition is that E won the same number of matches than that by H. Now this statement again gives a lot of information. Right. Now. If I combine this condition that each of the four teams won a different match, different number of matches. So A and H, if they are in the same group, then definitely both A and H cannot win same number of matches, right? Because within the group, all the four teams are winning different number of matches. That simply means both A and H are on a different groups. And H has qualified to the semifinals, right? From this, in fact, we can say that if F and G has qualified from the one group, then obviously the next from the next group B and H would have qualified for the for the same final. And A must not be in the same group where H is. So obviously A will fall in a group where F and G are. Right? I think this is also clear. Now further, it says that D lost least number of matches against C. Now again, we can say that C and D has to be in the same group, right? Because D, there is a match between. C and D and D is losing at least one match against C that simply means C D will go to one group right or together will go to a one group now if I look at this group then obviously there are three three teams we have already filled so C D has to be with a group wherein uh, uh, the other two teams are B and H 
and obviously we are left with E so obviously by default E would fall in a group with A, F and G. So we have identified what are the four teams in each of the groups. So let us, uh, let us say that this is group one where uh, A, E, F and G are the teams and the second group is uh, say where C, D, B and H are the teams, right? So we have bifurcated the teams in the groups, in their respective groups. Now let's try to find out uh, that uh, what was the number of matches each of these team won within their, within their groups. Now again, we should go back to this condition to understand it clearly. It says that there is no tie in the group and, each in, and, and in each of the group, each of the four teams won a different number of matches. So this is the only thing which is given and from this only we have to identify that what could be the possible number of matches or the wins uh, the, in a group could have been possible, right? So let us just focus on this, right? Now let us assume that there are four teams, say P, Q, R and S, right? And these are the four teams in a group and everyone won a different number of matches and everyone played with everyone else exactly two matches, right? We know that there will be 12 number of matches within the group. Now we can say that the maximum number of wins any team can have is six, right? Because suppose P won the maximum number of matches. So obviously P will be unbeaten in the group. Nobody can beat P. So P will play two matches with Q. So it will be two wins and two matches with R. And again, it, there will be two more wins and P uh, two matches against S. And again, there will be uh, two more wins. So the maximum match any team can win within the group is six, right? So we can say that the team which can, uh, which can appear say on the position one, suppose uh, P appeared, uh, P got position one and Q got position two and R got uh, position 3 and S came at the last in the group matches. So if P is getting the maximum ma maximum number of wins, then it can be 6, right? Because P can win 6 matches. So what I am taking here is that every team is beating all other teams which is below it or has been written below it, right? So P will be beating all these 3 teams and every time twice so obviously the number of uh, wins is six and q since he has been beaten by p twice so obviously it, it will lose two matches but it can beat two matches uh, uh it can beat r and s in all the four matches right so we can say that q the total number of matches win can be four r obviously cannot win with p and q so it will beat s in both the matches so the total number of wins R can have 2 and S will not be winning any of the matches so it can be 0. Now here we can see that all these 4 matches have a different win. So this is this could be one of the possibility for either of the group right. Now the other possibility can be identified by, uh, by tweaking or changing some of the results of this particular case only right. This is the one case. So I can change some of the uh, some of the matches and I can come up with the other cases wherein the 4 teams can win different matches. Again, I'll, let me assume that there are six uh, matches won by P. So P has beaten every every uh, every other team, right? Now, uh, suppose I want to change the number of matches which Q can win. Right now it is four. So let me make it less than four. So suppose uh, I want to make it three. Then it then Q must lose one of the matches. Now, if it loses uh, with R, suppose, then definitely R will. Uh, the tally of R will increase to 3 and the tally of Q will decrease to 3. So again both of Q and R will be having same number of matches one but it can't happen. We don't have to take those cases. We have to take that all the four matches so or all the team all the four teams should have different wins. So obviously Q and R there should be no upset. So we can try for Q and S. So if there is an upset from uh, two Q and S in this case I am taking this case as the reference then we can say that Q will be losing one match with S exactly one match with S then what will happen is that Q the total number of wins will be 3 and R obviously will retain it because I am just changing only one match between Q and S right there are two matches played between Q and S I am just changing one result between Q and S so Q or uh, Q the number of wins will be 3 and S number of wins will become 1 Again, we can see that all four values are different. So this could be uh, this could also be one of, uh, one of the possible case. Now let us try to find out that uh, if the maximum number of wins is less than six, is it possible that we can have five or four different teams having different matches, but the maximum number of wins is not six, it is less than six. 
so let us again assume that p is the uh, is the team which has won less than 6 matches so let us assume that it has won 5 matches now again if this is the reference then what we have to do is that p since it is winning all the matches so it has to lose one of the match just to make it tally from 6 to 5 right now if it if it loses to q then what will happen is that q's uh, q's tally will increase from 4 to 5 right and P's tally will decrease from 6 to 5. Therein, both the teams will be having same number of wins. So, we don't have to take that cases, right? So, let me just rub this part. So, obviously, uh, there should be no upset between P and Q. So, if I take uh, upset, uh, let me just change the color. So, it will be easily identified that which two teams I am talking about. So, suppose there is an upset between P and R. That is, R beating P in exactly one match. So what will happen that P's tally will move from 6 to 5 and there is no upset for Q so Q will retain its uh, 4 match uh, 4 match win and R will increase its tally from 2 to 3 right and since there is no uh, no upset with S so obviously it will be 0. So again we can see that there are 4 different numbers and obviously this could be the possibility. Now just to ensure that uh, the for which 2 teams we are taking the upsets so let me just mark those things in the first case I took from Q to S so let me just mark uh, mark say asterisk mark here so it will just remind me that for which two team we have done the upset right and in this case obviously the upset is between P and uh, R in the same case for P winning five matches uh, we could have done the upsets of uh, upset of a match between P and S right one match between P and S therein what will happen that P uh, the number of match will reduce from Q to uh, from 6 to 5 and Q will retain its number of match to 4 and R will retain its number of matches to only right and there is an upset in the match between P and S so S will be increasing one one match will be will be winning one match so obviously its tally will be from 0 to 1 so again we can see that this is the another possibility so till now we have four possibilities or four cases wherein the four teams can win different matches right now uh, we have done with uh, we have done uh, uh, we have done the upset of p with uh, r and s it can't have an upset with uh, with q obviously otherwise both p and q will have the same uh, same number of wins now let us see that whether there is a possibility that uh, the team who got the highest wins is less than 5 so if that is the case then suppose P wins the highest uh, win and it is uh, say 4 then in that case what will happen is that just to ensure that all three uh, other teams should win different number of matches but less than 4 obviously I have to put it like this right this is the only possibility I, have, I can do therein what I find that the sum of these numbers is equal to 10 as you can see 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10 but there are 12 matches played right so there will be 12 winners in the in the group that simply means no team just by winning four matches can come uh, come come at the highest position in that particular group right so if four is not possible then obviously the possibility of three and any other number less than four is ruled out so that simply means that uh, we have identified that what could be the possibilities and these are the four possibility which we can see now out of these four obviously there are two possibilities which we have to take for each of these group and for that we have to come back again to the condition right so and obviously we know that uh, in in all the cases the top two teams will reach to the same final so let me just uh, bifurcate this particular table and i can say that uh, these teams in either in in any of the cases which we take will move to the semi final and these teams will be eliminated right now let's come to the the condition number 3 because this is the vital condition from where we'll be identifying that which case will belong to these groups now it say that a won the same number of matches than by uh, that by s that means the number of wins by a and h is equal and we can see that h has qualified to the semi final but a has been eliminated right you can see this you can refer to this h has qualified to the semi final but a has been eliminated that simply means that in 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 each of the cases a should come at the third or the fourth position right so a can take the number of wins can be either 2 or 0 or 2 1 3 0 2 1 right now we can see that obviously if a is 0 
then in any in in none of the cases just by winning zero matches the the team is not coming in the top two right so obviously uh this can be ignored and uh, and again we can see that just by winning one match no team so if i assume that one is the number of matches one by a then there is no team who is getting in the top two just by winning one matches and in fact that is true for two also right just by winning two matches no two no team is getting in the top two in all these four cases as you can see but there is only one case which is three as you can see just by winning three matches if this is a then a can get eliminated and if this is h then you can see that h can be moved to the semi final and this is the only case possible as you can see right because the value of a can't be taken as 4 as you can see but because at the bottom 2 we don't have the value 4 and this is the only case possible that means we have identified the cases in which the group matches have been uh, won or group matches have been played right or the results of the group matches have been played and that is this belongs to a group where the team a is uh, where, where one of the team is a so that means this is for group one and this is the result of the group uh, where h belongs so obviously this is for group two and this is for group one as we can see right now let us just fit the values for a b c d etc so we can say that a is winning three matches and obviously since e is getting the least number of wins so obviously e will be winning zero matches so i'm just taking this case right and f will be winning four matches because let's say that f is being beaten by g so obviously f will be winning four matches and g will be winning five matches so we have just done with this case now let us move to the uh, for group two so obviously this is the this is the case for group two so obviously since h is getting three three wins so and h and b are moving to the semi final so obviously b will be six h will be three and uh, and in this case we can see that c must have beaten d right because c is winning both the matches to the person which is below it right and d is winning one match not against c but it's winning against h right because you can see that these are the asterisk mark which we uh, which i made which was showing the upset so obviously c is winning two matches and d is winning exactly one match so we have done with the, everything now it's time to move to the question so now let's take the first question and say that which team won the highest number of match in the first round so we can say that b is winning the highest number of matches and that is six so option three is the right answer Question number two, which team won exactly one match in the first round? So in the first round, exactly one match, we can see that D is the team which is winning exactly one match. So again, option three is the right answer. Now third is, what was the total number of matches won by G in the first round? So G is winning five matches. So obviously option two is the right answer. And for four, which team or teams lost at least one match against A in the first round? So if we look at this case, this group, then we can, if I just uh, list the teams in the order in which they have won the number of matches, so it would be A and followed by E. So G is winning 5 matches, four is the, uh, F is winning 4 matches, A is winning 3 matches and E is winning 0 match, right? And in this case, we took that G is beating all the teams below it, right? Except, the, uh, except in the case where there is an upset. And F is beating all the teams which is below it. Similarly, A is beating all the teams below it. So obviously, A is beating E. So A, B, E will be beaten by A. And we made the upset, right? Because this was the reference case, right? And we took this case by doing upset from first to fourth position. So obviously, G was beaten by A. So obviously, A beats G as well, right? So there are two teams which are beaten by A. So obviously we can say that only E and G, that is option four, is the right answer.